Is West Asia preparing for another war, a more devastating one? I ask because the indications are all there. U.S. and Israeli forces are on high alert. Iran is talking about punishing Israel. Flights on the route are being cancelled and frantic diploma diplomatic activity is underway. All the classic signs that something big is about to happen. The question is, what? U.S. officials think that Iran will attack Israel. It could be a major missile strike or a drone attack, and it's a very confident assessment. One official said it's a question of when, not if. But why is Iran escalating? Because of what happened last week. An Israeli strike hit the Iranian consulate in Syria. Seven Iranian soldiers were killed, including two top commanders. And since then, Iran has vowed revenge. Their Supreme Leader repeated those threats on Wednesday. He used his Eid speech to target Israel. Embassies in any country are considered part of the soil of the country that owns them. When they attack our consulate, it's as if they attacked our land. The wicked regime made a mistake in this case. It must be punished and it will be punished. The US is quite worried about this. So what are they doing? Pursuing a dual track. The first is diplomacy. Joe Biden's envoy in West Asia is working over time. He has reached out to four foreign ministers. Those of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Qatar and the UAE. He gave all of them the same message. Tell Iran to dial down tensions. And the message was delivered. On Wednesday, Iran's foreign minister spoke to the same four counterparts. Tehran says regional tensions were discussed. And that's the first track. The second is military preparation. Reports say a top U.S. general is visiting Israel. He heads the U.S. military central command. The plan is to prepare Israel for the attack, maybe even plot a response. Plus, you had a strong statement from Joe Biden. He's been scaling back his support for Israel. And once Iran was mentioned, his attitude changed. Biden has now says that his support remains ironclad. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. And what about Israel? Their soldiers are on high alert. If Iran attacks, they will hit back. That was a message from Israel's foreign minister. So things are pretty tense. Even airlines are worried about a spillover. German carrier Lufthansa has suspended its Tehran flights. And there's a reason why. On Wednesday, Iran state media posted some worrying news. They said Iran's military was conducting drills, so the national airspace was closed. Later, they deleted that particular article, but the rumors had spread by then, which brings us to Iran's possible attack. What could it look like? Experts have mentioned two possible options. First is a cyber attack. It could target Israel's civilian or military infrastructure. The second is a missile or drone strike. And this is what the U.S. fears. But such an option raises two questions. A, where will the attack come from? And B, what will it target? Iran has always used proxies to target Israel, like the Hezbollah in Lebanon, or the Hamas in Gaza, or the Houthis in Yemen. They have never launched attacks from their own territory. If they do it now, it will be a major escalation. Frankly, it depends on how far Iran wants to take it. As for what will be attacked, again, it depends on Iran's appetite. Israeli military installations are a possibility, but those are high-risk targets. A low-risk option is Israeli foreign missions, your embassies and consulates. The government knows this. Around 28 Israeli missions across the world have been shut. Reports say the ones in Bahrain, Morocco, Jordan and Egypt have been evacuated. They've suspended work in their missions in Delhi and Mumbai, according to reports, and security has also been stepped up. So Israel is bracing for the worst. But are they doing anything to prevent the attack? to maybe signal a climb down. Well, we are seeing mixed signals. Israel is still attacking targets in Gaza. A major strike was carried out on Wednesday. They bombed a car that was carrying Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh's sons. Three of them were killed, but there was collateral damage. Hamas says Haniyeh's grandchildren were also killed, three girls and one boy. So there is no let up on the battlefield. At the same time, diplomacy is making headway. Israel has agreed to some concessions for a ceasefire deal. They will allow 150,000 Palestinians to return to northern Gaza. No checks, no restrictions. In return, Hamas must give information about the Israeli hostages. Just one problem, though. Many of them are feared dead. The deal requires Hamas to exchange 40 hostages. 
But some reports say Hamas may not have 40 living hostages. And if this is true, it could derail the talks. Of course, Iran will be watching all of this. They will want to pick the right moment to strike. And even if they don't, this standoff will have long-term implications, especially on their nuclear program. The Iranians have always been paranoid about their security, and now they will be more paranoid. Could that spill over into their nuclear ambitions? Well, the indications are not good. A new report says that Iran is a short dash away from a bomb. What does that mean? They could have weapons-grade uranium in a few days or a few weeks. A bomb could be made within six months. Again, this is worrying news. A nuclear bomb would be a great assurance for Iran, yes, but it would also trigger a regional arms race. So attack or not, these are dangerous times. And we can only hope that calmer heads prevail.